Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This is the channel where you learn all about the art of bird photography. Today's tutorial is focused on five tips that will help Canon shooters get better bird images. Let's get started. Tip number one of five Canon tips for bird photographers is how to get a level to show up in the viewfinder. We all know that on our Canon cameras, we can press the info button and we'll scroll through various screens there and we can get a level on the back of our camera. And that's really good for landscape photographers, but it's not really gonna help us very much. What we wanna do is we want the level inside the viewfinder. So if we're walking around shooting or we're low level to the ground shooting, eye level with shorebirds or ducks or something, we have a level in the viewfinder. Press the menu button, scroll over to the wrench icon and go down to the second tab and then scroll down to viewfinder display and you can see I've already checked it on so there it is but I'll press the set button and we can see the options there you can hide this or show it if you show it then this nice little level will show up at the top of your frame in your viewfinder and you'll be able to tell if the horizon is level and you'll also be able to tell if the vertical orientation is level so you've got a vertical and a horizontal leveling in the viewfinder and that will help you so that you don't have to crop later or do any extra post-processing okay so tip number two i use this all the time and i've separated the active focus point and the area selection mode that would be like shooting single shot or one of the zones I've separated those from shooting vertically and horizontal and the camera will remember where the active focus point was the last time I used that vertical or horizontal you know, orientation. So I go into the autofocus menu, I go into the fourth tab, I go into orientation linked autofocus and I separate my autofocus point for area selection and for the active point. Once I've separated these, if I'm shooting in a vertical orientation doing a portrait, I can have a one shot with the force around and I can have that at the top of the screen. And then if I'm shooting in a horizontal, I can have one of the zones going on and I can have the cursor right in the center. So by separating those, you're able to change between horizontal shooting modes and vertical shooting modes really quickly and you have different area selections so you can be shooting differently that way and you can also have the active focus point in a different orientation okay so tip number three is what i call wrap around autofocus points so if you turn your camera on you go into the menu system and you go into autofocus menu number five you've got this af point selection movement and you see those little two arrows there those indicate that you can move the active focus point off the right side of the screen and it will show up on the left side of the screen Go into the next um, screen there by pressing the set button and choose continuous and that will set it up so that you can move that active focus point off the left side of the screen. It will show up on the right. On the right side, you wrap it around and it comes up on the left side. I use this a lot when I'm doing portraits and the bird changes its head and it's looking right, then it's looking left. I can move the active focus point around so that I can get the focus point right on the bird's head. Tip number four is if you're shooting in manual mode, you can't access the exposure compensation. So I'm shooting in manual mode here. If I turn my camera on, you can see on the back of the camera, I'm manual mode, one one thousandth of a second F8 auto ISO. So I'm floating the ISO. I really don't have any exposure compensation here, but if I press the Q button on the back of the camera, I can activate any of these and make changes to any of these boxes. I can actually dial in some exposure compensation. If I've got a bald eagle flying by, I would go plus two because the bird's darker than the sky behind it. And I can just dial in this. Generally what I do, I'll take a test shot. I'll look at the back of the camera. I'll look for my blinkies or my highlight alerts. And then I look at the histogram. I'm looking for a nice exposure. So I want to underexpose a little bit to protect the highlights. Then I will dial in some exposure compensation and I'll just press the Q button that'll activate one of those boxes I'll move it to the box that I want and then I'll dial in the exposure compensation I think I need and then I'll take some more shots and this tip works out really well for shooting in manual mode okay so tip number five AI servo image priority this is kind of obscure not too many people know about it but it's really important if you go into the menu system you go into the autofocus menu and then you go into tab 
Number two, you see this AI Servo First Image Priority. I press the set button to give me my options here and I can have this set up for focus priority or release, shutter release priority. I would rather have my focus be sharp when I take the first image rather than the camera just start taking images and then worry about getting autofocus later. It's like, that doesn't work for me. I want a sharp image right out of the box. I set this to focus priority. You can also go down to AI Servo second image priority and then you can set this one up so that it's speed or focus or I have it as equal priority for speed and focus. This helps out if you're doing sequential shots. So let's say you're doing a burst mode of four or five shots. You know the first one, you've set it up so that it has focus priority and it's going to be sharp. And then the next ones, there's an equal emphasis on speed and focus. And so then hopefully you'll get better shots throughout the sequence that way. Hey, if you enjoy what I'm doing over here on my channel, give me a big subscribe, like, and share this with your friends. If you're interested in any bird photography workshops and you want to learn more about the art of bird photography, please head over to my website, timboyerphotography.com, where I've got a list of about 10 workshops that I do throughout the Western United States. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next Wednesday. Good shooting. Bye.